Hi, I'm Paris of Paris Ashley Home, and today I'm going to show you how to transform your cabinet, your kitchen cabinet, with a divider into a wonderful cabinet with pull-out drawers and to just make it way more functional. Uh, so follow along because uh, the journey is about to begin. Let's go. All right, so to start, I am going to be cutting our support pieces for inside the cabinet. Um, I did pre-order the drawers. I'm doing this for a client, and it was cheaper and faster to order the drawers ahead of time. And I'll put that link for you uh, down below on where to order these custom drawers. Um, they weren't too pricey for four drawers. It was 600 so about 150 a drawer um, building it yourself. Uh, would save on cost, but you also have to know how to build drawers. So anyways, I cut down support pieces two for each drawer, so eight pieces. I made them um, two inches tall and I used two by four, so they were one and a half inches thick. Based on the cabinet, the inside of the cabinet and the thickness that I needed for the drawers, including the drawer slides, I got super lucky and I needed exactly one and a half inch on either side and that is what a two by four is, one and a half inches. So after I cut down all of these support pieces, I wanted them to match the drawers. I didn't want just some gross cut wood on the inside of this cabinet. I wanted it to look professional since again, this was for a client um, and I wanted to make it, you know, look like I knew what I was doing. So I went ahead and I sanded these all down. I started with an 80 grit, then I went to a 150 grit and ended with a 220 grit. Once I finished sanding in all of the levels of grittiness and made them all nice and smooth, it was time to get out our wood conditioner and stain these. So I did a wood conditioner on all of these pieces. After I conditioned all of them, I went back and I wiped off any excess wood conditioner and then I waited the uh, 30 minutes, give or take. You know, maybe I didn't wait a full 30, but uh, you're supposed to wait 30 minutes before adding your stain. And so after I did the wood conditioner, we went ahead and stained. I went with Special Walnut. This is a gorgeous color, and as you can see the drawer on the left, as we start going, um, it matches it pretty perfect. Uh, the lighting here isn't showing you how perfect it is, but trust me, when I get it in that cabinet, you're gonna be like, wow, she did a great job. <laughs> At least I hope. Uh, so yes, again, I rubbed the wood, the, I'm sorry, the stain on all of the pieces, and as soon as I was done, I immediately wiped off any excess, and then I let them dry for a hot minute. Uh, now it was about 30 degrees outside and I needed to seal these and you're not supposed to paint if it is below 50 degrees. So I brought these support pieces inside and put my little space heater on the table and got them all dried up and added some poly on these just to give them a nice seal so that, you know, if any food or damage comes into that cabinet at any point in time, these will be protected from whatever elements uh, will occur. While those support pieces were drying inside, I grabbed my speed square and drew a line down the center of the drawers to install the drawer part of the drawer slides. I'll install the other half of the drawer slide once we get to my client's house. Uh, once I got that line down, I made sure that the drawer slide was one eighth of an inch back from the front of the drawer and I went ahead and drilled that in. Um, after I got all my screws in, I made sure that it was even on the top and bottom and then I repeated this process for the seven other drawer slides. So we are installing four drawers, which means that we have eight drawer slides. And once we got all of those installed, it was time to head over to my client's house and remove the door so we can install the drawers. Woohoo! All right, after I got all of these drawers off, uh, I grabbed a pencil and drew a line on the back side of the door where I would be keeping the centerpiece so I knew where to attach that centerpiece to the door. Then I went ahead and removed that door. I got out my circular saw and lined up this piece of wood as a guide so that I could cut off this center piece. I used my clamps to hold it in place. Um, I will say looking back, if I had added a little piece of painter's tape, this may have helped the wood splintering um, a little bit better when I cut the actual wood, but it still turned out just fine. Once I got the bottom piece cut, I went ahead and added my clamps and support piece to the top and repeated this step. And then, you know, cut it and the middle piece was gone. Woohoo! All right, so it was now time to remove this shelf because we are adding drawers and we are getting rid of this shelf. So I used my uh, utility knife and scored the edges and this shelf was a lot harder to get out than I anticipated, but once I figured out how to get it out, uh, the other shelf came out just fine. It was really just installed with some brad nails and I just needed to beat it, literally beat it. I got inside, I tried to look and there was no screws, nothing. It just needed a little bit of a, uh, you know, 
not TLC, the opposite of that, a little, a little punch. Um, and then I got out my circular saw and cut the center and realized that would help uh, get this out since it was kind of wedged and stuck in there. I did grab my sander and smoothed out anything that I had cut or removed just to make sure that there were no splinters inside of the cabinet and then it was time to install the drawers. But first I wanted to attach the center piece to the cabinet. Now this one, the veneer had fallen off of the MDF uh, in the center piece so I wanted to go ahead and repair that first. So I added a little bit of Loctite glue. I got that all attached and then it was time to attach it to the actual door. I used the pencil line as the guide from when I initially took the door off, added some more glue. I smoothed it out so that the glue wouldn't push out through the edges. When I attached it, I clamped it down and then used my pin nailer to add a whole bunch of pin nails on the back and then like three or four on the front. Um, I will end up coming back with my brad nailer because I just didn't feel like it was secure enough. Repeated that on the other door and it was time to get our first drawer in. So I just set down the support pieces and got the drawer slides on each side just to make sure everything fit. And it was perfect, it was absolutely perfect. I couldn't believe all my measurements worked. So at this point I grabbed that initial piece of wood and I actually used it to raise the side piece to make sure that there was enough space between the bottom of the drawer and the cabinet, um, you know, to make sure that it would actually slide. Once I did, I made marks on all of my support pieces and I got all of the drawer slides holes drilled. That was a tongue twister. Um, I measured all of the pieces at the same time. Once I got all of those holes marked, I also made four additional holes in all of my support pieces that this is how I would be attaching it to the inside of the panel. I then got my countersink bit to make sure that the screws would be below the top of the wood so that the drawer slide would sit flush with the wood. I also drilled in a little bit deeper for the countersink because I had one and a half inch screws and two inch screws. One and a half inch wasn't long enough, two inch was gonna go through the side and having that little extra quarter of an inch dip in the countersink bit gave me that space so that the one and a half inch screws would reach perfect to the outer edge of the cabinet. Along with the screws, I did add some more Loctite glue and I smoothed this out. If you don't smooth it out, the glue thickness, even that 16th of an inch of thick glue can mess up the drawer slides on your drawers. It can make it too tight. So you wanna make sure you smooth that out before attaching it to your cabinet. Um, then I used my good old foot as my brace to make sure that the wood was against that cabinet. Cause again, if even a 16th of an inch would mess up the drawers uh, being able to be installed correctly. Then I went ahead and attached my drawer slide. Yes, being in a cabinet is silly, but you know what? It makes it a lot easier when you can get your full body strength up against it. Um, I did install the drawer slide on the opposite bottom. Uh, the camera couldn't catch that angle and I didn't have enough cameras to move around, so it's there. It, was attached the exact same way. Then I was attaching the one above. Um, instead of using wood blocks as height supports, I went ahead and used my foot. Um, I believe that this way worked just as well as cutting blocks at the correct height. <laughs> Do whatever you want, whatever makes it easier for you. Um, I went ahead and used my foot and a level and a tape measure and you know what? It worked out pretty darn well, which you're about to see here. I don't wanna give it away. Um, after I got all of these screws installed, I did install this drawer slide as well. And you know what happened? After I installed all four of these drawer slides, do you know what happened? The drawers went in without a hitch. I didn't need to add any shims. They went in absolutely perfect and I just jumped up and down in celebration. I'm sorry I did not catch that on camera, but it happened. Um, if you don't believe me, I'm sorry. But look at that, oh my God, oh my goodness, it was so great. Um, my clients were so happy. Um, so after I got the drawers done, I did add a little bit of wood filler to those uh, cracks in the wood from cutting. And then I also went ahead and got the um, wood pens from Home Depot, the Verifane repair markers, and I did do some touch-ups. Of course, somehow I stopped recording when I did the markers, but um, it made those little gaps disappear. Um, for the most part. And then I went ahead and reattached all of my doors. This is where I added a few more brad nails, like I said I was going to, uh, just to be a little bit more secure. I also went ahead and added some silicone, 100% silicone, um, kind of like a glue, just to make sure, again, that these centerpieces don't fall off or get loose over time. This just uh, gives a little bit more security on these pieces. And it's clear, so you'll never see this, but this is just, you know, a little extra. 
And then it was time to put the doors back on. This was the last piece of the puzzle, just adding those doors. Once the doors were back on, I also uh, put their drawers back in so we could see what it looked like all finished. And oh my gosh, look how cute. We have two drawers that match. Do you see how well the side support pieces match as well? That's why I stained them so it looked like it was part of the cabinet. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer anything I can for you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you come back for more. Follow Paris Ashley home on all your favorite social media accounts instagram youtube tiktok facebook pinterest and i believe that's it uh, have a great day